our senior policy analysis expert and also on our international projects and national intelligence. Rick Rennell is joining us, part of our team, of course. Rick, we got a lot to talk about. I want to talk about this Twitter situation. Elon Musk makes a pretty bold investment. Uh, not pretty bold, a big, big investment into Twitter, a publicly held company. Twitter has, as we know, has uh, is not, and I want to be clear on this, they are not the marketplace of ideas, okay, which is what we talk about when we talk about concepts of free speech. Um, you sometimes can get away with your statements, almost, but if you're a conservative, you're definitely on the list, and, and the president of, uh, the CEO of, of Twitter has said as much. So how, how do you view this move, Rick? I mean, Twitter is still the big platform for this, though. I mean, they are still the biggest platform for this kind of social engagement. Yeah, I think Elon Musk said it best. He called it the de facto public square, and I think that that is largely true. Uh, we have to remember that Elon Musk is not a conservative, but Twitter went so far radical left that even those who are in the middle or maybe middle left suddenly were lost by what Twitter was doing. I think they that Elon needs to clean house at Twitter. You need to send a big, strong message that what they've been doing to silence free speech, to shadow ban, to kick President Trump off, but to keep the Iranian regime and Putin on, I mean, it, there's just the double standard is so glaring that they don't have a case to talk about being able to support free speech. I think that if Elon does a quick uh, cutting of, of you know, the CEO and everybody who's in the office of censorship, it would send a powerful message to the rest of corporate America. You know, where Elon Musk is absolutely correct. I mean, and it's, it's, it's consequential when you use the term marketplace of ideas, because when we talk about the phrase marketplace of ideas, that is a, that's, a, that's a legal term of art. If something is the marketplace of ideas, usually, not always because there has to be government action, but if something's the marketplace of ideas, that means it's the place most appropriate for free speech, Cece. That would, when you say the marketplace of ideas. Right. You would think that free speech would be allowed there. And when uh, Elon Musk said he was looking forward to making significant improvements to Twitter in the co coming months, I hope that he does that. I hope it, they are significant and they are improvements for free speech. Yeah. So, you know, Rick, the truth is, I mean, they're not a state actor, so it's not you don't have First Amendment protection like you would if you were to sue them. Uh, if it was a government that was doing this kind of censorship, viewpoint based discrimination or something like that. You don't have that. But it is, you know, it is supposed to be this kind of free-flowing idea of marketplace of information. It's not. Do you think that someone with Elon Musk's clout and now investment, because that becomes a big part of this, uh, could move the needle here? Yes, and, and you just hit it on the head. It's the investment, right? It's not right. Elon Musk saying to Twitter, hey, guys, you know, you're not very fair. Uh, they've largely ignored all of the big voices that have attacked Twitter for not being fair, for censoring certain speech. They have not done a thing until the investment, exactly as you say, Jay, the money talks. And what I love about Elon Musk is that he puts his money where his mouth is. And I would say to a whole bunch of other billionaires in this country who have a passion for America, you gotta put your money where your mouth is. You can't just sit on the sidelines and complain and have seven houses. Let's see you put your skin in the game. Let's see you invest in some of these co companies that won't change, and then you push for change. That is going to help, I think, save America. Uh, again, I'll just finish with this. Every great civilization has lasted roughly 250 years, and I think we have to take Ronald Reagan's admonishment to fight for the freedom of every generation we have to fight right yeah, now. And these are the new avenues of communication. You cannot deny it. The social media outlets. And the, another aspect of this, Rick, and then I want to get, go to move to this Title 42 situation, but another aspect of this is for good or for ill, Twitter is going to be the big one. I mean, it is the big one. So it's controlling right now, at least, most of the marketplace of, of that type of social media engagement is Twitter. There are others that have started, some have started and not done so well, some have started and failed, some are starting and trying to get going. It's not been easy for these other other companies to get going. Yeah, it's not been easy. Uh, Twitter got a, a jump out in Huge. front. I have to say, I love Truth Social, and the engagements on Truth Social are just as big, if not bigger, than Twitter. And I'm enjoying Truth so Social because I know that no matter what we say, 
our ideas are not going to be censored. Yeah, well, that listen, I, I I think that's all great, but again, you can't ignore the the monolith in the room, and the monolith is Twitter. They are still the big player here, and if any move towards free speech is going to be a good move. All right, let's move to Title Forty Two. This was put in during your administration. It was to. While we had the COVID crisis going on, we're not going to let people just flow through the borders. You've got Democratic members of the Senate, Menendez, Walker, I mean, Booker. Um, You've got members, uh, Kelly. Mark Kelly has also said this. Don't remove Title 42. It's the wrong time. It's going to create chaos chaos at at the border. And this is their president, Democratic president, and these are Democratic members of the House and Senate. Cinema also said this, and they're being ignored. And they're right now, and we just had our head of government affairs on, and Than thinks it's going to be rescinded. Look, you've got a huge problem here because the Biden administration has announced that on this date in May, I think it was May 23rd, there is going to be a crisis at the border greater than what there is now. Now, we all know right now it's terrible. We don't, We almost don't even have a a recognized border, and it's only going to get worse. We've seen reports that people are getting their 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 you know situation together. They're planning. They're packing. They're going to move on the border on this date. I, I have to say too, though, I don't understand why dropping this uh, COVID mandate is happening without having the mask mandate said, dropped yeah. on the plane. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other mandates that should be dropped at this time. Why this one? Why now? Well, because it's it's Harry Hutchinson said, Rick, early in our broadcast, who's our director of policy, and he said it perfectly. They're not being governed by the science. Oh, yes, it's science, political science. That's what this is really all about. We've got a great call coming in. I want to take it. Stephanie, go ahead. You're on the air. Hi there. Thanks, Jay. Yeah, sure. so I'm a small business owner here in the construction sector in Texas. And uh, one of the things we see working in cycles, being a native my whole life here, and I'm in my 30s now, is uh, we see a lot of um, the illegal influx. And then we see super cheap labor, which obviously is a form of trafficking because the guys who are hiring them are incentivized to not say anything, obviously, for profit's sake, which is pretty common uh, in uh, some of the upper uh, levels that are allowed, but it's not allowed here. You know, these these guys, they have no recourse in there, and they have access to single-family residences, to yep. businesses. And, you know, obviously, there's going to be a trickle-up effect in insurance and sure. a lot of things because, you know, I mean, th- this is cute. You have thousands and thousands of guys that are sick. In these day labor sections, oh, I and, know. you know, what happens with desperation? Well, this is, this is Rick, this is we were talking about, that these decisions have consequences for, for Americans every single day, for families, whether it's the fentanyl situation coming in through Mexico, made in China coming through uh, Mexico, whether it is the labor situation that's driving things up. This is the problem. It affects everybody. Look, uh, Stephanie sounds very smart on this issue. Uh, Obviously, she's on the front lines in Texas. And those on the front lines understand not only the grassroots implications of seeing a porous border, but they also see the hypocrisy of what government is doing. And I think that's what she is really getting at. And she couldn't be more right. Those on the front line see it every day. But unfortunately, I think every state is starting to become a border state and starting to see this exact problem. Our lawmakers have to confront problems. They need to close the border and recognize if you don't have a border, you don't have a country. You know, Rick, what you just said is absolutely right, because Cece Hiles, uh, one of our senior counselors here with me today, and she said what she was doing research for this, even her home state of Missouri— which you wouldn't think it's not a border state, is impacted by this. It is impacted, and and the um, AG stated that 56 out of every 1,000 unlawful migrants ends up in Missouri. Again, not a border state, but you hear story after story about all these unlawful migrants being shipped into every state across the United States. 56 out of 1,000 end up in Missouri. So when you got 18,000 coming in uh, starting in May, a day— that's going to be a big number. This is a, the Rick. The problem is huge. La- last thing, very quickly. You, we got less than a minute. Ukraine, Russia. What a the, what we're seeing with what these Russian troops purportedly have done here is horrific. Yeah, and let's just remember that it's reportedly. It looks awful. Your heart is breaking when you see this. There has been Russian disinformation put out. There's been Ukrainian disinformation. 
Um, look, at the end of the day, I don't think as an American, you can look at the situation and not have your heart break and think, where's the UN? Where are the yeah. humanitarian groups? How do we help? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. No, I appreciate it. Rick Rennell, thanks for being with us. Appreciate it. As always, appreciate your insight.